All right, welcome everyone. Thanks for coming by. Glad you're here today. We're um, going to have some uh, fun. We're going to work on some flower uh, uh, arrangements here. And this is actually just a simple, small excerpt of um, one of my uh, books I have in my studio. So I just basically cropped, uh, cropped a small portion of the um, uh, study lesson in the book. Um, so you can do, you can basically do this with, uh, any type of, um, uh, reproduction of other, uh, artwork, watercolors, uh, magazine pictures, online pictures, really anything, something you can uh, bring up on your phone and then, um, uh, on your, uh, portable mobile device and, and freeze it on, on your phone and work from that. So basically really you can com come up with a lot of ideas, uh, to, um, just do like a small composition of, uh, maybe a larger picture, but just shrink it down. Like I did here, which I like to do a lot, shrink things down into like a small window. So I just use the mat here. And, uh, I also use a small piece of watercolor paper taped on the other side of this, um, of this mat that I have here. So, so this is a regular, uh, standard mat for, uh, framing, for framing watercolors. And then I just take a piece of watercolor paper and I tape it on the, the back of the mat and shrink down the, um, the, uh, artwork, uh, as I need to, to kind of frame it out the way I think looks best. And so this is kind of a nice small composition we can do. And it's some really pretty flowers and lots of colors. And it's an interesting feel. There's like a window behind this flower arrangement here. So it's in a vase. The vase isn't of course uh, shown here, but um, it's in the bottom portion of the painting. Um, but uh, this is a, a great uh, composition to do. Sometimes just uh, zooming in on a, on a subject can really uh, be fun to just work uh, with. And so we'll do that. Again, this uh, background here is a, a window. So there's bright sunlight coming through the window. So we have kind of like that effect of backlighting, really good backlighting. And then there's some uh, regular ambient light inside the room, of course. So um, makes a nice uh, composition. So let's work on that. I'll just set this across for me uh, on my art table here. I sometimes work at my um, desk. So I work either at my art table in my studio or at my desk, uh, sometimes the kitchen table. And I'll, we'll zoom out here. Okay, perfect. And the uh, bottom of the, and this is tape. So I taped around my, uh, my watercolor, so I have regular, I have um, Fabriano Artistico watercolor paper, and I basically just taped around it with a good drafting tape, good artist tape. I usually use uh, drafting tape, I find that's the best. Uh, doesn't seem to um, cause any problems with tear tearing the paper when I'm uh, lifting up the tape, so drafting tape is really good. And we'll start our drawing. So I'm basically just gonna contour draw. Basically, I'm going to start in one spot and just move around. And uh, with contour drawing, it's just real simple. It's um, starting in one location and then just using that one location. And then as I move through the drawing, I'm just using all of the previous portions of what I've drawn uh, to kind of scale and gauge the other um, parts of the subject matter according to the, um, what I've already uh, drawn. So in essence, it's kind of a, let me see if I can find this. So here's some paper. So if we started with a flower like this, and then we have a stem going to the left side with contour drawing. We're gonna look carefully as we're going this way and sort of see how far that stem reaches up before we have to start branching it out with another flower. So we would look at this stem and say, is that stem, this would, this would be in our mind as we're carefully drawing slowly, very slowly. 
we would say to ourselves is the, how far is this this stem uh, projecting out from this flower and if we kind of look across the flower we can say well it's about the width of this flower so in essence we're going to use the flower here to gauge how far this stem is going up. So if I notice this stem, as I'm looking at it and I'm drawing, is approximately the same uh, width as this flower, that's what I'm gonna do. And if it's a little longer or a little shorter, that's okay. With contour drawing, it doesn't have to be exactly, like we don't have to take out a ruler and start measuring things. We just kind of get the, the general idea of the, the distances of things b between each other. So that's kind of the idea of contour drawing. We're always kind of, branching out from an area and gauging how our other parts of the drawing are relating to the um, place where we're starting from. And if we kind of stay within that area, and then we can keep moving out from there. So it's almost like a, a trip through the paper as we draw, and we're sort of staying close to other um, parts of the subject matter so that we can kind of gauge the sizes and distances of things as we go. So it's kind of a just a slow process. We take our time. Of course, if you're not used to contour drawing, you know, you have to go a little slower at first, but once you get used to it, you'll find that it's kind of like a rhythmic thing. It's almost like a beat of music. You, you know, you'll, the beat will go quicker as you get more familiar with it. So I kind of, I explain it to people sometimes that way. It's almost like a, um, it's got like a, a rhythm to it. So in the beginning, it's going to be maybe a very slow rhythm. If you're just kind of getting new to contour drawing, or if you contour draw a lot, then your rhythm is going to be faster because you're sort of used to always looking at everything and gauging everything as you're going. So it becomes like a rhythmic type of drawing where you know you're not making things exactly perfect but you're getting it quite close to what you're looking at what your subject matter is so that's just a quick uh, description of contour drawing and then we'll just we'll start out here we're going to look at our picture across the way and we'll start down here so i'm looking at this first flower and it makes up about and we can always do a preliminary drawing too when we're contour drawing. So we can we can almost just take a super incredibly light sketch of where things are. And then this is over here, the other flower. And there's another flower here. And I'm starting to get the, get the rhythm now here a little bit more. But this is just a really super preliminary light sketch just to get the feel of where everything is. And then this over here is about at the same height as the top of this flower. So we'll just get a line there. And, and then this is sort of the other. So that's good. That's a very super light sketch. You probably can barely see it on the camera as I'm videoing here. You might be able to see that. And uh, now we'll, we'll go in and, and do the uh, drawing, the contour drawing. And I'm going to try to go slow. The painting process is going to handle most of the details and the real beauty of everything, but it's good to get the get the drawing in. this way
And I'm trying to get that, keep the rhythm going here. Just trying to look at everything as I'm going. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. I went out of the page a little bit here, off, off my uh, boundary here a little bit, no problem. Again, when you contour draw, you, it's probably not going to always come out perfect. You'll find you'll sometimes, you'll have maybe more space in some locations, let's say next to your border that you drew. If you drew a border or you put tape down, you'll find that you might sometimes go off the page a little bit, that's okay. Or sometimes you'll find you might end up a little bit short of the border where your picture might be right on the, the border of the, the uh, paper. So um, again, it's not an exact uh, representation, but it's close. And I'll put the lines there. A little bit of the window panes. And that looks pretty good. So we, we've completed our contour drawing and the fun part now is painting it. We'll definitely take a break. Um, it's always good to take uh, breaks. I didn't finish over here. I just saw that now. There's some more purple flower over here. So I'm gonna just get that uh, couple leaf uh, or petal forms over here. The uh, purple uh, flower here. And that should be good. Okay, excellent. We'll take a break and we'll come back. All right, now we made it back. We're, we took a break. Uh, I always encourage everyone to take breaks. Um, it's uh, really important to kind of just uh, relax for, for a little while, maybe five, ten minutes. Um, if you stand while you're painting, you know, you might be able to sit down for a few minutes, five, ten minutes. Um, or if you're, if you're sitting down while you paint, you can stand up and stretch and, um, you know, just move around a little bit, um, uh, refresh your concentration. So I, I think uh, breaks are great. Um, I always encourage everyone on my videos, if you're here all the time, you'll, you'll know I always uh, say to take breaks. It's a great thing. really helps tremendously to um, just keep your uh, painting and your composition and whatever you're working on uh, fresh and uh, focused and um, fatigue will be less likely to get you and cause maybe some problem with the drawing or the painting usually. So a uh, very good uh, thing to keep in mind. But you know, some people I know have better concentration, so everyone's different. You might need more or less time to uh, relax or more or less time to take a break, but for the most part, breaks are good generally, just for everyone, um, does help. 
And uh, I just wanted to mention, too, if you're new here for some reason, if you're just stopping by, uh, please consider subscribing. Um, also, if you um, hit the bell by the sus subscribe button, uh, you'll be notified when our uh, videos come out each week. We do week uh, Every weekend we do new videos on everything watercolor, all types of subject matter. I also have uh, many, uh, over 250 other videos on my channel here that you can uh, peruse through and, and look and see if there's other, you know, paintings you'd like to try or things you'd like to look at to uh, learn new information on watercolor. And uh, we'll keep going here. We'll get our paint, our paints ready to go, as you can see. Uh, it's got to be fresh, moist paint. I always, uh, you'll notice if you're here all the time, I always say it has to be fresh squeezed to paint or um, when you store your palette, um, if you put some paper towel, a uh, damp paper towel in your palette, and then put it, uh, your palette into a plastic bag um, and maybe put it in a cool place. If it's warm out or if it's um, uh, winter time, you can put it by a cool, uh, maybe a drafty window or something. Uh, it'll, your paints will stay like this, really nice and, and moist and you won't have to worry about uh, anything. But uh, if your paints are dry, it's really very hard to get um, good results uh, with your watercolor painting, especially like we are gonna see here right away when we get started with this, we're, you're gonna see how beautiful the color looks and it's, it's because we're using fresh uh, moist paint. So we're gonna go right in, we're gonna get some cadmium red. And again, I'm working for my reference photo and I'll just, that's our reference photo. And I just sectioned it off a little bit with a piece of mat. And we'll set that across and we'll get started. So straight in to the paint. And I'm just working around to get the shape of the um, petal. rinse off my brush. I usually have a tissue in, on hand and I usually take a little bit of water off the brush with the tissue and then I go back in and I pick up that straight paint again and I'll, I'll get a little more red, cadmium red paint. Maybe I might add a little cadmium orange, just a touch of that. Just to maybe change up that color a little bit. Maybe a little bit of purple. And dry off my brush. And then back in, I can also maybe a little bit of lizard and crimson there. I like to vary the colors. makes for a really good effect and here I notice the light is hitting the petal over here on the right side so I'm going to put my paint on first that thick moist paint first and then I'm rinsing off my brush tapping off some of the water and then I'm just going to smooth out the paint a little bit into that area there like that And maybe we'll go in to get some interesting, this is uh, Rose Matter. Now here I added a little extra water to get a lighter look here. Then I'll go back into the cadmium red. And I try to vary my brush the way it moves to, to get variations in the, the look of the uh, shapes within the flower. And then here we're gonna do 
some uh, cobalt blue for the center of the petal, the center of the flower, mixed with a little bit of purple. And I don't make it a round, perfectly round shape. I kind of vary it a little. Then I'm going to connect up with the left side over here with the red. And again, I'm looking at the photograph across from me of the painting. And I'll mix a little green, sap green, olive green, a little bit of um, cerulean blue, a little bit of yellow ochre, cadmium lemon yellow, raw umber. I'm putting a lot of different variations in here just to get a little bit of a an interesting green mixture that's not just a straight color from the tube. So I want to mix mix my green up a little bit, give it a little more interesting look there. So just a little bit of green in there we see. A little bit of green over here too. And I'm starting to venture over to the right side here. There's some Viridian green mixed with this green a little bit there like that. That looks about close. Maybe a little more blue. It's kind of a pale Olive green with a little bit of burnt umber, maybe. And some viridian. Okay, so that's looking very well so far, and let's work over here some more. We're going to get some purple. I rinsed my brush, and now I'm going in and getting some purple. Rinse my brush again, dry off a little bit of um, water, a little bit of splashing there. And then I added in a little bit of red, some alizarin crimson, to that purple. more purple and uh, rinse off I rinse off the brush dry the brush off a little bit then I get a little bit of that lighter tonal value underneath okay and I'm just working my way upwards from the base um, I can maybe, I'll leave this to, for last because I'm going to probably have my hand resting on the paper over here as I'm working up this way. So I'll leave the, I tend to work from right to left if I'm right handed. Or if you're right handed, you'll probably more or less work right to left when you paint. And if you work, uh, if you're left handed, of course you would work starting at the right side of your painting usually and then work to your left so that you're not leaning back into your, your paint. So I'm just being careful. and. If you take breaks, a lot of times it'll it'll dry for you. So breaks also work as an advantage when you're painting. Um, once you 
do something like this, you might take a break at this point when you get this first uh, flower or two done. And then you can work, um, keep working uh, after that, after a small break. We'll keep going here. And I just took a little bit of um, yellow, cadmium yellow, to put a little bit of color in here. Just a real light tonal value of some yellow. And I'll put that down here too a little bit. And over here. And then some more color over here. I'm just doing some of the window sill and the windows and some of the this is probably by like a kitchen window or maybe in a living room or something, the, f the flowers. Okay, now we're going to go back in. We'll get some more of that green mixture we have. Um, that's uh, olive green, a little bit of sap green. A little bit of raw umber. And I dry off my brush a little bit. And then I just do a little leaf forms here. Then I might rinse off my brush, dry it off a little, then maybe get some of that cadmium lemon yellow. and just make a, a different variation of green here. That looks good. And get some more of that purple. We'll start working into this flower here. And a little bit of cobalt blue. And I'm going straight into the paint, no water really. I'll just rinse off my brush and dry off the brush a little bit. And then I uh, go back right into the straight, into the purple paint. So sometimes I don't always rinse off my brush if I'm, uh, if I'm using the same, pretty much the same color or colors. Like I'm gonna go straight now into my cobalt blue. I really didn't need to, um, Rinse my brush, and then I rinse it now, dry it off a little, and then I can use the water in the brush now just to kind of get that light tonal value in this section here. Straight into the purple paint. So I, I try to Try to get lots of variation here. And we let the brush dance around sometimes on the paper to get those little spots of white paper occasionally just to keep things, uh, some of that light bouncing around in the picture. And we're changing our colors here. Just we're going really with the purple and purple and um, cobalt blue. Just sort of mixing those two. And we can always go back in and do a little more work into the flowers to get more shapes uh, of each pe individual petal by adding a little darker 
uh, paint or tonal value. So that's always the thing to keep in mind. When we're painting a flower, we can always go back in and add a little more definition to it just to have it look a little more close to the um, what we're uh, painting from. And we'll do this here. <clears throat> and we'll go in and get some of that darker. Paint there, maybe a little bit of burnt umber. Cobalt blue. Then some cadmium lemon yellow to get a lighter feel. And again, if we can swing our brush around, I usually just take my hand and my arm and kind of swing it around to get the point of the brush this way to get that point there of the uh, petal. And then maybe some of the raw umber. Almost pretty much straight paint there. Raw umber, straight paint. I rinse the brush, dry off the brush a little. And then straight into the raw umber and then get a nice point on there. And then just... And that's pretty, pretty good. And... Now's probably a good time for a break, so let's take another break. Um, I know the tendency is to want to keep going, and but I think a break will be good here, so let's take a quick break and we'll come right back. All right, so we did had a little break. Uh, gonna clean up the palette a little bit here. Just make sure we, um, we want to keep uh, fresh, clean colors as we work. So every once in a while we're going to clean up our palette when the colors start to look a little muddy. These colors over here are still um, in good shape. They look fine. We don't have to really worry too much there. And let's continue. We're, I change my water occasionally too as well, my uh, water bucket. And we'll continue on. We're going to We'll start working here on this uh, flower. We got uh, purple straight into the paint. That's that fresh, moist paint. And cobalt blue mixed in with that as well. Okay, so we got a good feel for different color there, different color mixtures. Maybe a little cerulean too. Maybe a Lazurne Crimson in Rose Matter. Rinse off my brush, dry a little bit. And that's the uh, Rose Matter and a Lazurne Crimson. Rinse the brush off and we'll go back into the purple and we get some color in there. I'm going to use the damp brush. And we're getting our shapes, we're following the shapes of our petals of our flower. And a couple splashes. And then we'll get some green, olive green. Cadmium lemon yellow. A little bit of raw umber. And 
and maybe a little bit of Viridian. Maybe a little bit of sap green with some uh, sap green and cobalt blue for a little darker. Just to give it a little bit of a change there. And maybe some raw umber. We can get that stem in there. Just and I'll change the color of the stem a little bit. Maybe a little bit of uh, burnt sienna. So I get those straight, fresh, moist, burnt sienna, dry a little bit off on the tissue, and then I'll also add that in as an interesting uh, color. And I'll add it there too, so I'm going to, um, just as a... A reminder for myself what I usually do is if I add a new color in which I just did some burnt sienna I definitely as soon as I do it over here I automatically just find another place on the painting to sort of work a little bit of it into the other um, portion of the painting because if I just do it in one location it doesn't look as good um, it always looks good to have a little bit of counterbalance with the uh, colors so that's why I do that so that's just a good reminder for me that's my um, technique or my habit of doing whenever I add a new color I haven't used it at all in the painting then I'll make sure I just right away so I don't um, forget I immediately go in a few other locations and just add that in a little bit and it uh, works good and we're gonna go into some more sap green cobalt blue burnt umber we're gonna make a darker green with a little bit of uh, viridian and we'll do the. And here I'm trying to just get the feel for the. For the leaves, like that nice feel of. Then I dry off my brush a little. And just go back into the green, the darker green like that. That looks pretty good. And then I might start um, working on the, the feel of the window pane a little bit there.
and I go across. And I'm following the painting as close as I can. And a couple more splashes. Right, so we're really getting there. We're almost finished. We're going to take our last bit of uh, purple and we're going to start um, fill, uh, painting in our flower shapes over here, our petals. So I go in and then I uh, go into the water supply and add lots of water. A little bit of cobalt blue. Straight, straight paint right from the paint supply with really hardly any water on the brush here to get that dark. And then there's a few darks here. I'll add that in more. And a couple spots of color. And while we were on a break, I did a little bit of uh, cerulean blue here with some red, cadmium red, just for the, the um, trim work here by the window. Um, this is a window here. So the vase of flowers is right by the window and there's the window panes and so we're sort of uh, working with that idea. And if you see there's an area you want to get a little bit lighter tonal value in a flower, you can always go in with a little bit of tissue and we could roll it up and then just dab a little bit of paint. to lighten up a spot and then we can also go in and do a few uh, details to the to the flower if we want to get a few more the feel of the petals we can add a little more uh, another wash a light wash just a little darker in tonal value to pick up some of the the shapes of the uh, petals I think when doing the petals, it's good to kind of just have a free kind of flowing curve, curve, curve lines, cur curve, you know, curve, uh, curved lines for the petals. Um, so I'm trying to do that here, just have a little bit of the flowing feel to things here. Everything else looks pretty good. 
and there's a little bit more color over here. And that's just basically the um, burnt sienna and a little bit of the green mixture for the uh, woodwork. And the bright light of this, the bright sunlight coming through the window kind of plays around in the, in the scene, in this painting. So you kind of see some of the wood trim and you don't see other parts of it. Um, that's kind of the light bouncing around. So it's kind of that feel of bright light and it's backlit. So some of the flower shapes even become a little bit um, diminished. And then sometimes adding a couple small Um, shapes of uh, color with this flower kind of makes it feel that feel that there's bright light all along the the outside rims of the petals. So that's a thing we can do. And I think this is good. We'll maybe we'll take the tape off and see how it looks with the uh, natural. Uh, border of the tape. I hope we had fun with this. This is really a fun exercise and a composition to do. Um, again, we took lots of breaks. You can do this over a couple days or so. Like if you're crunched on time, you can do 15 minutes every day. And in two or three days, you can kind of get through this. And as long as you're just using the same palette with the same fresh colors in here, um, you just continue working and you'll have all your colors still here to reference back to. So you'll always know in the beginning, if you're just kind of starting out with watercolor or you're just a couple years of painting, sometimes it might be a little challenging to figure out what colors you were using in your painting. But as time goes on and you keep using the same palette and the same colors, you'll, you'll pick up real easily on what colors you were using so you wouldn't even necessarily need to leave some paint out on your palette but if you're sort of new and you're not so sure about colors if you can match back what you were doing here you just leave some of your paints out on your palette like this and then you'll be able to more easily see the colors you were using you can jot it down on a piece of paper the colors if you want or you can reactivate these these reactivate pretty nice a little bit of water and they we can use those. And we'll take a look. Let's we'll see if we can zoom in here a little bit. Okay. All right, so we had a lot of fun. Uh, let's enjoy our watercolors. It's a process, it takes time, whether you've been painting just a couple weeks or a couple months or years. Um, if this is maybe some kind of, uh, of new subject matter you're working with where you haven't really tried flowers before, then it takes time to get used to it. It takes time to uh, get the feel for it, so never worry. Um, it's just a matter of uh, working on it a little bit um, every day or so or once a week even if we paint. That's a really good um, uh, way to practice. All right, everyone, we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.